Gabe Rosado, thank yeah. you so much for being here, obviously. For sure. For sure. Um, the game of boxing, how many years have yeah. you given your life to it? Uh, professional 14 years now. Professional 14 professional years. 14 how old years. are you? 34. 34? Turned, yeah, yeah. Turned pro 19 one day, one day uh, before my birthday, right? So, yeah, yeah. 14 years. Amateur? Uh, so the amateur, I only had one year amateur. So, yep, I had 11 fights as an amateur. So I, I started boxing at 18. Mm -hmm. I started late. And then, um, you know, we just picked up from there, kind of learned uh, as a pro. So from day one of, of boxing, when was your first fight? Amateur fight? Um, yeah, 18. 18. One, day one, learning what a jab is. So, so I think like three within months. Within three months. Okay. We did Kinda like me. And then I, I went open on my, I went open on my, like my third fight, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I went straight open. Okay. So I was just like fighting guys that like had a ton of fights. And then like I went to the under 19 tournament on my fifth fight. And I fought a guy with like 350 fights, me and Joe Green. Is that, was that his name? Yeah, he's my boy. Yeah, Joe Green. So yeah. they call him me and Joe Green. And then, um, yeah, I fought him on the under-19 tournament. At that time, it was like Danny Jacobs was on that, was, was in it, um, a couple guys. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just kind of, you know, I learned the hard way, right? I just went right in, started fighting top guys, top amateurs, and then. But were the, you a fighter on the streets before, like as a kid? Were you trouble? Did you give your parents Well, family? you know what? I wasn't really, I wasn't like a troublemaker or anything, but uh -huh. like where I'm from is a tough city. So Where are you from? Philadelphia. Okay. So Philly is just uh, is a is a rough, rough town, and um, is really is actually normal to just fight every day. Like that's not even, that's very normal. <laughs> so I was my first fight was I was like in first grade. I yeah, remember at school? I remember like I was fighting already when I was six. What was the cause of that first fight? I don't in first really, grade? I don't even remember, um, and it was just always like that. And then you know. Um, it would just be one of those things where like, if you had a problem with somebody, y'all just, all right, meet me after school. And then, you know, you just- I do remember that in high yeah, school. Yeah, after school. <laughs> meet you right? at the water tower. Yeah. <laughs> or, you, or you rumble in recess, or you yeah. go in the bathroom, yeah. and you, and you, and you, you, you handle it. up. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I grew up, and mm -hmm. that was normal. So, I, you know, I guess with so many street fights, I kind of like, you know, start, you but know, did you watch boxing? At I that did. Time? I was I was a big boxing fan, so I, I would so first before I was a boxing fan, I was a Bruce Lee fan, mm. and then I was a John Claude Van Damme fan, and mm -hmm. I got them tatted on me. So I got a portrait of John Claude Van Damme on this leg, and I got Bruce Lee on the other leg. So like, I looked up to those guys, and then with my father, we me and my father would watch boxing. So I would always mimic their moves, and I would beat up the my the rice bag. My mom did groceries. We had a big old yeah, rice yeah, bag. Yeah, yeah. I beat the shit out of the rice bag, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then so, and then uh, you know, and then that's when picked up like the street fights and stuff like that. And you know, like I said, being in a rough town, that's like you're either soft or if you're soft, you're gonna get bullied all day. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you're tough, then people know that you know not to test you. What was the most difficult uh, street fight? Um, Before becoming a boxer? I, I've literally fought 20 guys at once. Like, literally, like me, Why? me and my cousins. Because, <laughs> it's funny because See what the happened. mentality that I had was, the mentality that I had was like, you know, the more, the more dramatic mm -hmm. a situation was and I come out of it, the more respect I get. Mm. So, I actually would, I wouldn't even shy away from something like that. Do you feel like it helps you out? Because one thing about you with the fights, yeah. you put on a bra and you yeah. give your heart. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you're also, you can see that grind. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah. Do you feel that helps well, you out? Well, yeah, I feel like boxing exposes you for who you truly are. Mm -hmm. So like if you're a coward, it's going to show that you're a coward. If you're, if you're out of shape, it's going to show you out of shape. But if you got heart, it's going to show you got heart. Like it's going to expose you because it doesn't get any worse than like, let's say, let's say uh, in the middle of a round you get cut and now the blood's going in your eye and now you can't see your true character is going to show. Like, all right, am I going to cop out or am I going to keep going? What yeah. keeps you going now? Like after so many years and yeah. truly for me, I've had four losses. Yeah. After 
your, you know, whatever number of loss that you've yeah. had? What continues to push you through and not give a yeah. crap what other people say? Yeah. And what else do you have yeah. to prove to I yourself? Think, I think what keeps me going now is because I've, I've always faced adversity in my career. So like being that I didn't have a big amateur background, mm -hmm. I came into the pros pretty mm -hmm. much just like going against the wolves, right? Because I wasn't, you know, an Olympian or, or anything and I didn't have a manager or mm -hmm. a promoter or anybody that was paying my bills where I had to just, I had to work graveyard shifts and train for fights at the same time. So your professional fights as well? Yeah, my professional fights. So How I'll, long were you going? The working? first eight years of my career. Really? I always had a job. So I, I had a nine to five, like graveyard shift or digging ditches and all types of crazy jobs. We're out back home? Huh? Back yeah, home? Yeah, back in Philly. So going through that grind, and as I was going through that grind, I had suffered five defeats because I was fighting guys like Angulo. I was fighting guys like Fernando Guerrero. They weren't looking after me. Correct. So, and you weren't backing down. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, just taking go. these fights. Yeah. So being that I have five losses at the time and mm -hmm. then you know, I'm working a job and stuff like that. I still knew that I would make it on the big stage. Mm. So it was just that attitude of not quit, not giving up and stocking shelves in Home Depot. Mm -hmm. I, I actually liked that job because I, I enjoyed my, you know, the, my coworkers and my mentality was like, this ain't gonna last forever. There you, you know go. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, I went to work with a good attitude. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to work like fuck. I had a good attitude. Yeah. So being that I was able to then that year of like 2012, I was able to knock out Soto Karaz. I was able to knock out Sagoon Powell. Then I knocked out Charles Whitaker and I ranked number one at 154. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I went to the garden and headlined on HBO and I made good money and I was able to quit my job. So I guess me going through that type of adversity where I couldn't do the flag game, like, you know what? I, I tried it, caught a couple L's, this ain't working, whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't have that attitude. And I think now, the, what I look at is, all right, now I have ex the experience. Mm -hmm. Now I have the knowledge. I still have the skill. I'm mm -hmm. still healthy. Now I have tools that I could use that will help me in these big fights mm -hmm. moving forward. So for you, um, boxing or yeah. in life, what's yeah. next? I'm just looking forward to like what I got to offer, especially being with Freddie Roach now. And you know, What's the biggest change with him? Freddie Roach is just, he's just so professional, mm -hmm. straight to the point. Mm -hmm. It's just all boxing. I don't even think Freddie owns a phone. <laughs> he's just like locked in, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just fun to come to the gym and we're right to it. And mm -hmm. it's a game plan. And he's very, like I was very, um, obviously for him to be at the level that he is, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be very locked in, right? Absolutely. But you know, I remember uh, going into camp and he would look up footage and he would talk to me about certain things he saw and weaknesses and flaws and things like that um, right away. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was sharp, man. It was just, it was a different vibe and it was just a camp where it just flowed really good. And then we had a good fight and I think moving forward, it's just gonna like, that momentum's gonna keep going. How many fights have you been with him? It was just our last fight. That's right. Yeah, yeah, December, right? But I know Freddie since the NBC fights cause he was the commentator. Really? So I'm familiar with Freddie since like 2011 cause I would, come to the wild card gym and I would spar, you know, I would come visit from Philly mm -hmm. and spar. So like, you know, me and Freddie are very familiar with each other. So he's been seeing my style for a while. When you look back. Yeah. 30 years from now. For sure. What do you want people to remember you for? Okay. Um, I think I would want people to remember me for like, uh, just being real, being honest, being genuine. Um, and, you know, I think when people meet me now, they get this perception that like I'm tatted and I'm this tough fighter, so they think I'm like not approachable. Mm -hmm. But then I'm just very, I'm a people person. You are. So once I open up to people, they're like very like, oh shoot, he's bad, cool. You are. <laughs> so it's just, I just, I just want people to know like, you know, I, I guess I would want to be seen as someone that just was, you know, nice to people and just was always, you know, always gave people time. That's awesome. For That's sure. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome because yeah. I think boxing is um, is a chapter in your life. It's yeah. not your whole life. Yeah, for you're sure. You're a shitty person during yeah, yeah. boxing. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you're gonna stop boxing. You're a great boxer, but you're yeah. a shitty person. Yeah, you know, for after. Sure. It's, for sure, exactly. That's awesome that that you say that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I have daughters. I have two kids. So, yeah. 
boxing is just something I do. It's not who I am. Good. So I'm more, uh, you know, raising my daughters is more important to me than anything else I do. So that's like really me being a good father is probably what I mainly uh, want to accomplish in my life. Is that's that. awesome. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. You. Appreciate it. For sure. No doubt. Bye.